Hi everyone, today we'll be discussing some common diagnostic tests for gram-positive cocci. So gram-positive and gram-negative have different biochemical tests for its identification. So for this video, we are going to tackle the common diagnostic tests for the identification of gram-positive cocci. This includes catalase, coagulase, Bacitrocine and optogen sensitivity tests. So we are going to tackle the principles of each test and how is it being performed. For the first one, we have the catalase test. This test is used to determine whether an organism can utilize oxygen. Catalase is an enzyme that splits hydrogen peroxide into free oxygen and water. The enzyme is invariably present in aerobes but never in anaerobes and microaerophilic organisms. As a differential test, the catalase is used to differentiate between staphylococci, which are catalase positive, and streptococci, which are catalase negative. This test cannot be made on blood agar because red blood cells in the, in the agar also possess catalase. And using this blood-containing media can lead to false positive results. For the procedures, we need a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. This hydrogen peroxide or agua oxenada are commercially available in the drug stores, and this may also be used for the catalase test. So first, you need to prepare your tubes containing 3 to 4 ml of 3% hydrogen peroxide, and then aseptically transfer your organism using a sterile wire loop. Bubbles of gas appear immediately in a positive test. And take note, colonies from blood-containing media should not be used as this can lead to erroneous results. After that, record your results. To demonstrate the catalase test, we have here a Staphylococcus aureus and a Streptococcus pyogenes. These two react differently to catalase tests. One will produce bubbles of gas and one will not react at all. So you have your wire loop and you have to insert it into your tubes containing your hydrogen peroxide. As you can notice, the stuff or use produce gas immediately after inserting your wire loop, while Streptococcus pyogenes does not react at all. So Staphylococcus aureus is catalase positive and Streptococcus pyogenes is catalase negative. Another way to observe for your catalase reaction is using the slide method. So you just put a drop of your hydrogen peroxide solution on your glass slide and then transfer your organism. The same reaction must be observed Staphylococcus aureus are catalase positive, while Streptococcus pyogenes is catalase negative. Next, we have the coagulase. The production of hemolysis, fermentation of mannitol, and formation of pigment on blood agar cannot always be relied on as a definite proof that a staphylococcal species is pathogenic. The presence of enzyme coagulase is used to substantiate that the strain is virulent. Coagulase is a protein with a prothrombin-like activity. This protein can convert fibrinogen into fibrin, resulting in a clot formation. A coagulase-positive strain will clot plasma after 3 hours at 37 degrees Celsius and almost always after 18 hours. 
A false positive reaction may occur when mixed cultures or pure cultures of gram-negative rods are used. For example, Pseudomonas clots plasma because it is a citrate utilizer. Citrate is normally incorporated into the plasma as an anticoagulant. When citrate is utilized, the plasma artificially clots. Therefore, the coagulase test should only be used on organisms which have shown characteristics of staphylococci. So, coagulase test is used to differentiate stuff or use which is coagulase positive from other staphylococcal species. Here, we'll be needing a rabbit plasma. So, this is an example of a lyophilized rabbit plasma. But if you do not have rabbit plasma, you may also use human plasma. The procedure for the procedure to 0.5 ml of diluted plasma in a small tube inoculate heavily with staphylococcus cultures to be tested and then incubate at 37 degrees Celsius in a water bath. But if you do not have water bath, you may also use your incubator. Examine for clotting at intervals. Okay, wait. So if this is your tube using your wire loop, just transfer your organism and then incubate. So after three hours, examine after 30 minutes, examine for clotting in at intervals of 30 minutes for three hours. Tubes showing no signs of coagulation or clotting at this time should be returned to the water bath and the final observation be made at the 18 hours period and then record your results. So this is an example. In the stuff or use, you can see a slightly cloudy gel-like clot formation in the upper portion. Well, there is none in the tube for stuff epidermides. So for you to see it clearly, here is another video. So you can see that there is a gel-like clot in the tube of stuff or use. So indicates that this is coagulase positive. Another way for coagulase test is the slide coagulase. Slide coagulase is used to detect the presence of cell-bound coagulase, and the positive result is indicated by agglutination. So stuff aureus is slide coagulase positive, while stuff epidermidis is homogeneous, meaning it is coagulase negative. Slide coagulase. Tube coagulase, by the way, is used to detect the presence of free coagulase. So that's the difference between the slide and tube coagulase. Next, we have the bacitracine sensitivity test. The bacitracine sensitivity test can be used for presumptive differentiation of group A and non-group A streptococci. The growth of group A streptococci is inhibited by a low concentration ranging from 0.02 to 0.04 units of bacitracine, but most other streptococci are not inhibited. A zone of inhibition of any size around the bacitracine this indicates sensitivity, therefore a positive test. No zone of inhibition is considered negative. If a red ring can be seen around the disc, this is also considered a positive test. It should be noted that this test is used only for streptococcal species that display beta hemolysis. So the procedure is just like the procedures for the evaluation of antibiotics. But here we are using blood agar plates. If you have two organisms, let's say strep pyogenes and strep agalaxae, so you just divide your plate into two and label with your organism to be tested. 
using a sterile wire loop, transfer and then spread evenly one test organism on one half of the plate and the other organism on the other half. Then aseptically place a bacitrocin disc on the center of the strict area using four steps and gently press the disc to the surface of the agar. Invert the plate and incubate at 35 degrees Celsius overnight. Examine the plate for growth inhibition around the disc and record your results. So the strep pyogenes and strep agalaxie are both beta hemolytic on blood agar. So to differentiate strep pyogenes from other beta hemolytic streptococcal species, bacitrocin sensitivity test is used. So a growth of inhibition is present for streptococcus pyogenes indicating that this organism is bacitrocin sensitive or bacitrocin positive, while other streptococcal species like streptococcus agalaxie is resistant to bacitrocin. Bacitrocin is also called, also known as taxo A. Any zone of inhibition is considered positive or sensitive. The last one is the optogene sensitivity test. Optogene or ethyl hydrocoprane hydrochloride sensitivity tests the fragility of the bacterial cell membrane. The test is used for presumptive identification of alpha hemolytic streptococcus pneumoniae. It specifically differentiates streptococcus pneumoniae, which, which is optogene sensitive, from other alpha streptococcus species, which are resistant. So the difference between bacitrocin and optogene is that bacitrocin is for beta hemolytic streptococcus species, while optogene is for alpha hemolytic streptococcus species. There are two discs that can be used, the 6 mm optogene disc and the 10 mm disc. If you use a 6 mm disc, a zone of inhibition of at least 6, 14 mm in diameter is considered positive for pneumococci or streptococcus pneumoniae. A diameter between 6 and 14 is questionable for pneumococci, and the strain is presumptively pneumococcus only if it is biosoluble. For a 10 mm disc, a zone of inhibition of at least 16 mm in diameter is positive. The strains with inhibition zones between 10 and 16 should be tested for biosolubility. The procedure is the same with the bacitrocin. You have your blood agar plate, divide it into two if you have two organisms to be tested, and then inoculate with your organism. Transfer or aseptically place your optogen disc using four steps, incubate overnight, and examine for growth inhibition, then record your results. Here is the result of our optogene sensitivity test. This is your strict area for streptococcus pneumoniae, and this one is for viridan streptococci. So these are both alpha hemolytic and blood agar, and you can see that there is a zone of inhibition surrounding the disc for streptococcus pneumoniae. So this zone of inhibition must be at least 14 or greater than 14 millimeter in diameter for it to be considered optogen sensitive. That is if you use a 6 millimeter diameter disc. But if you use a 10 millimeter disc, your zone of inhibition should be equal or greater than 16 millimeter. So those are some of the tests routinely performed for the identification of ground-positive cocci.